Hello everyone, I'm Jesse Mason, and for this episode of Teach Me, let's begin with a question. What does the future of online education look like? Yes, everyone knows that billions and billions of eyes will be watching millions and millions of recorded lessons, just like this one here. But what I really mean is, what does the online classroom of the future look like? Well, I think I may have stumbled upon the answer back in March, when all of academia was suddenly shoehorned onto a computer screen. A startup in Ann Arbor called Saganworks gave me permission to debut their software with my quarantine physics students at Schoolcraft College. The results were nothing short of transformative, and if you know any teachers, they're going to want to see this. Welcome, my friends, to the world's first three-dimensional virtual classroom. What you are looking at is the next evolutionary step in digital content storage. The familiar but flaccid two-dimensional system of nested folders has been replaced by an intuitive and inspiring three-dimensional space for storing knowledge. Knowledge items in this environment are organized on tables and shelves, and the space is fully furnished and meaningfully decorated, converting cold, computer-driven coursework into a warm and unforgettable learning experience. Let's take a stroll, shall we? Greeting us as we enter the classroom is a JPEG of our school mascot, the Ocelot. On the table below is a PDF document which outlines the revisions I made to our syllabus when the course was moved online. Nearly all concepts were introduced asynchronously using recorded lessons, which can be found on shelves organized by topic back here. Here's a little sample involving some AC circuit components. Thinking that the inductor stores it in the B field, the capacitor stores it in the E field. Of course, I also recorded demonstrations for them to watch, like this one. Hey everybody, it's me. I'm in the OCC physics labs for just fluorescent, but if I apply an ultraviolet light, like I am with this laser, to the electrodes, boop, I get it to light. This is the photoelectric effect. If I and I left them a little love note at the end of this demo. You gotta do physics demos in a physics classroom. Now, as for labs, we had just a couple experiments left in the semester, so we did two recorded labs. Here's one my kids helped me with. Everybody, we're in my backyard and we are taking measurements of focal length of this lens. Focal length of this lens. Don't turn it! Each lab had instructions to go with the recordings, and students were expected to eyeball all the measurements using the video footage. After the lab's due date, I uploaded a solution using the values I obtained. Of course, solutions to all our homework, quizzes, and exams were available in our virtual classroom as well. Lastly, my students could interact with me face-to-face -face during our weekly Zoom meeting using a link in this cozy little corner over here. I used our Zoom meetings to work with the class on problem solving and to issue group quizzes using Zoom's breakout function. It worked really well. Now, if any students missed the meeting, they could watch the recording on this shelf right here. I'll play our last meeting to show you what we did for our final project. Originally, groups of students were supposed to construct electric devices and present them to the class. You know, the classic physics project. But, of course, they couldn't get together in person for the project. So instead, they collaborated virtually using SaganWorks' browser-based builder and constructed these cool educational exhibits to explain the history and physics of their devices. And then they gave guided tours to the whole class over Zoom. It was awesome! My students weren't the only ones working on virtual exhibits, though. Detroit's sprawling historical museum, the Henry Ford, recently announced their collaboration with SaganWorks on the construction of a virtual space for their vast collection of digitized artifacts. Given how beautiful this technology is, I wouldn't be surprised if the Smithsonian or Library of Congress followed suit. Now, I have a half dozen virtual classrooms to build before the fall, but my next SaganWorks project is not actually academic. My wife's grandfather passed a few weeks ago, and it was a difficult death for our family. He visited our home almost daily to help with the kids and share his love of candy with them. So I've started building a virtual memorial that our kids can visit from anywhere in the world to see pictures and videos of their beloved grandpop. 
If your head is starting to spin with SaganWorks ideas of your own, I encourage you to go to saganworks.com and test drive their browser-based software. Building doesn't cost a dime. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you or a teacher you know finds this video and this technology useful. And until next time, happy learning. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Grandpa. Happy birthday to you. Blow out the last one. There's one more. You gonna blow it out? Yay! Good things come to those.